$575 can be a significant amount of money. But for me, it was an investment towards self-confidence and a step towards my dream of living on a sailboat. That's why I chose to take the ASA 101 course. You're doing really good, but I'm getting really scared. Wait, no, I don't like this. And when it came time to pushing the boat off and do the motoring and all that to get out there, I freaked out. I had a panic attack. It just wasn't where I was able to do it today. Before the course, I had a month to prepare. During that time, I immersed myself in sailing literature and online resources. The course fee included the book Sailing Made Easy, which my partner also received when previously taking the course. With two copies in hand and only one needed, I made a quick cheat sheet of the review questions and answers. I took a black marker or pen and wrote down all the answers. I don't know how good you guys can see it, but I have bookmarked each section so it's real quick and easy to get to and written all the answers all over it. So the key answer question, if you've ever cheated on a test, which you know most of us have, I think maybe, then you know questions, answers. I then ripped out the answer key. So with the filled in book, I study the answer key. With the empty book, I take the quiz and I just write down the answers on a sheet of paper. And then from the written in book, I take the answer key and I grade it. I searched for online resources and found an ASA 101 YouTube playlist. And an audiobook available on Amazon for $20. Taking advantage of a free Audible trial and YouTube's free platform, I listened to the book and the playlist whenever I wasn't actively reading the physical book, ensuring I absorbed as much information as possible. Additionally, I practiced knots in my living room using the nautical knot tying kit for boaters and sailors from Amazon for $17 and YouTube's collective knowledge of knot hacks, building essential and required hands-on skills for the course. Though passing or failing the ASA one course doesn't affect my ability to live on, sail, or own a sailboat, it does affect my ability to rent one. Regardless, I strive for perfection <laughs> and I wanted to get a good score to validate my knowledge and efforts. Feeling uncertain about my performance on my upcoming test, I tried to focus my energy on getting excited about acquiring practical skills alongside equally enthusiastic individuals. We're three miles out from Anacortes and I'm starting to get really nervous. And like, I know they're gonna make us do the hi, I'm, my name is and blah, blah, blah. And I, do, I don't like doing that, I hate it. And then like, I'm worried. About, I just wish Steven was with me, I think. I don't like doing things alone. It's like the interaction with people I don't want to do, but it's the interaction with people that I need for the experience of the sailing, so. You need time and confidence on a boat when I am not there. Time and confidence on a boat when he is not there. Turns out I would be a class of one. Uh, New development, apparently it is a class of one, so as soon as I go in there, it is all attention on me, which, not what I wanted. <laughs> not what I wanted. Thank God I studied. Unsurprisingly, and despite being nervous about any possible scenario, I really enjoyed the classroom time. The first three hours were spent reviewing the book and answers I would need to pass the test. We even went over some things that would have been taught in the 103 course. The more they taught, the more questions I had, leading to pretty in-depth conversations. So depending on how much you and your possible classmates understand and ask, the teaching time may vary. I personally had a lot of questions regarding the rules of the road section. I think I just did an eye roll because I hated that section so much. For instance, at one point the rule states under Rule 18 of the Navigation Rules, a power-driven vessel must give way to a sailboat under sail. Full stop. But this isn't 100% true 100% of the time. The ultimate rule to always avoid collisions and the RAM rule, restricted area movement, are good examples of overriding Rule 18, which are covered in the book but not in reference to Rule 18. And that led to my confusion. 
After reviewing every possible question, scenario, and answer thoroughly, I took the test. And I got a 95%. Remember to wash your hands Remember to wash your hands Every time you've been around playing with friends Remember to wash your hands Remember to wash with soap Remember to wash with soap When you wash your hands after blowing your nose Remember to wash with soap And count it twin No, okay, but I caught the slip every single time. Very good. Caught it with that trick with the rope mm -hmm. and just pull oh, and just swing onto the end of the rope. So I feel really good about that. Um, I, I learned quite a bit actually out there. It was way too windy. He had me on the uh, tiller for a hot minute, and in one second we were right there just farting around, and then the next second we were like way over here, and I was like, I can't control it. He's like, okay. Motor on, you have to increase your speed. We didn't raise the sails, so it was too much. Yeah. On day one, we couldn't set sail due to high winds and we didn't spend a lot of time on water. Instead, we practiced catching the boat, putting in reefs, troubleshooting motor stalls, and understanding the importance of power in heavy winds. It's important to note that not all ASA classes are offered at the same price or have the same time on water. Variations in class hours and prices are influenced by location-specific factors, instructor and facility quality, course structure, and additional services provided. They also can't control the wind or guarantee that you'll pass the test. Despite the weather, they maximized their teaching efforts to ensure that I gained valuable experience, even though we only spent about a third of the time that I expected on the water. It was disappointing, but what can you do? All right, so we ended two hours early, but we did recovery drills. It was really rainy, really windy. We got pushed to like the other side of the shore and we had to motor for like an hour because we, we got so far just because of the current. Current was really strong. The wind and the waves, all strong. So I did not get to finish my course, but they said come back and it's, you know, already paid for, I just hop in on another class. So at any point that I want to get a sticker in my book, I can, but I don't really care about that. Um, I got so much experience. The fact that I was out there in such crappy weather was worth it. We had such a heel on our boat that I was scared. I was in charge of the main. I let it out appropriate timing and no, no one on the boat was worried. They, they said, oh yeah, you could have pushed it, but it's your comfort level, so. I was in control of the main, I was in control of the jib. I brought the main up and down, no problems. I asked them if they, at their level, would be wanting to be out in weather like this, which Steven and I have been out in weather like this, and they both said, um, well, the instructor said they wouldn't find it enjoyable. And the other person said, not at their experience level. So I'm feeling more confident in the decisions Steven and I are making as well, because we also chose the correct decision based on our level. So I'm feeling really good. I think that I got out of it what I wanted to and the fact that it was crappy weather only made it better for me. All right, we'll test this theory later this week. On day two, the wind was just as challenging as the previous day. And we had another student joining us. Fortunately, having an extra pair of hands and a lull in the wind allowed us to set sail. Practice figure eights, man overboard drills, and control over the boat in high winds. Exactly what I wanted to learn. Despite not getting as much time as I wanted on the water or a certified stamp in my booklet, I honestly wasn't disappointed. I understand that they can't control the weather and I appreciate the open invitation to gain more experience whenever I want, free of charge. They even invited my partner to join, even though he wasn't part of the class. Moreover, the time that I spent in the harsh weather was exactly what I was looking for. I value two hours of gaining experience and confidence in harsh weather conditions over eight hours in calm waters any day. So overall, I consider this a definite win. As with any experiment, there's a baseline, me being constantly scared, the experiment itself, win at the time, 
and then the results. So let's see if this experience translates into real progress in the long run. It's very rainy. No matter what, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get in at least two days of sailing this week, but I am actively checking the weather, the wind gusts, the precipitation. That is all part of sailing too, so. See if I can name all the parts of the boat. So that's the bow pulpit. These are stanchions. This line is a lifeline. The companion way. The cabin, cockpit, the tiller that connects to the rudder down there. These are fair leads, clam cleats. This is the main sheet. This is the main sail connected to the boom. This is the outhaul. The foot is the flat bottom part. This right here is the head and it is connected to the main halyard, the mast. The thing I'm holding on to is the shroud. This is the best thing to hold on to on a boat is the shroud. Oh. So we are currently on a broad reach doing 4.3 knots, 4.5 knots at a like eight, eight degree tilt, keel, an eight degree heel, an eight degree heel. Um, we did try doing a close haul and I was just a little bit uncomfortable with that, but I did stick it out for a bit. Right now we're just doing a broad reach. We might jive and go into another broad reach and then put the sails in, depending on how how this goes for us. It was just a little bit too much still for me. At the very least, letting out the main made me not panic, and also asking to bear away into um, a different different angle, and we found a comfortable spot. Okay, so as you can see, we are sailing. It is a gorgeous day out. We really did pick a great day to go sailing and tomorrow might also be on the table for us. All right, so we are going to have about five knots of wind consistently with up to gusts of 10 knots of wind. One lone fish. So with this amount of wind, we actually should be pretty good, but we're still gonna put in a reef because that's the rules we've set for ourselves. More experienced sailors wouldn't need that. And we have been out in stuff like that before without needing to reef, but we're trying to make this as enjoyable as possible while we're learning. And if we can diminish some of the anxiety we'll be able to learn a lot better. So getting comfortable with the wind and our skills and having a good time is the goal. Go in reverse. Not everything went perfectly smoothly, but I wasn't freaking out like I normally would. I didn't do a um, freeze response. Practicing catching the slip. What is going on here? Come on. This is gonna be a gorgeous day.
So as you can see, there's still some room to improve. When it comes to our main goal of living on a sailboat, I think this course was exactly what I needed. I got hours to ask questions, see how others reacted, and I boosted my confidence. There are a few things to keep in mind. Like the prices may vary, weather is not predictable, especially a month out, and maybe you get what you put into it, as with any worthwhile journey. Pursuing our dreams often comes with valuable lessons and unexpected challenges. My ASA 101 experience wasn't just about mastering sailing. It was about perseverance and the willingness to learn. And I emerged with new skills and renowned determination. To anyone chasing their dreams, remember, setbacks are temporary, but the knowledge and confidence gained are lasting. Keep pushing forward, embrace the journey, and never lose sight of the shore you're selling towards. I'll see you soon. Bye. We are dreamers of the shore.